Several years ago as a district we implemented a social emotional learning curriculum. Uh, so we've been doing a variety of activities grades K through 12 for a social emotional learning curriculum. Uh, one of our teachers came to us with the idea of the field trip to the Flight 93 Memorial for uh, our ninth grade students as they start to get into high school as a group social emotional learning project and activity and uh, our group has been going for several years. Uh, it's been a great experience for our students and our staff uh, as part of our social emotional learning curriculum. Every year we bring about 130 ninth grade students to Flight 93. In ninth grade social studies classes, students learn the basics of uh, the facts of the attack, what happened on that day, but also the greater historical context in which the terrorist organization, Al-Qaeda, uh, planned the attack and what their motivations were behind the attack. Uh, then on the day itself, we start first thing in the morning, the ninth grade class gathers. Um, we assign the students into different, uh, not exactly teams, but we call them pods, where a group of students will be together throughout the day. They'll go together with their chaperone to Flight 93 and spend all morning there going through the exhibits and hearing interpretations from the park rangers. And then in the afternoon we come back and watch a documentary about what happened in New York. To me that's interesting and important for a number of reasons. First of all, I was in 8th grade when, when the 9-11 attacks took place, so I was about the same age as they are. And as the years went on, we had students who were you know, maybe one or two years old when 9-11 happened and then weren't born and now the students were born almost 10 years after the 9-11 attacks took place. The poignancy of the attacks really isn't with them in the way it is with most, adult, most older adults. It's interesting when you go to Flight 93 Memorial, it, almost every adult you see there is, is weeping. Uh, the students usually don't start off like that because they don't have memories of the day that they're experiencing. But by the time they get to the phone call exhibit, um, it's become very real to them. It was my first time there and you know, I obviously, I was born in 2006, I was, I was far from being alive, both my parents were in college whenever it happened, and I've only heard like secondhand accounts, I never had any family that was close or even any teachers that have been close that have told me about it before, but being in that environment was like earth shattering is the only thing that I could like. It was insane feeling like this, how other people felt, especially hearing like the phone calls from the plane and stuff. like. I didn't, I didn't understand like how serious it was until I was there experiencing how these people went through. It was more of like a humbling experience to where you get to go out and actually see what this place looks like and what would have happened during that day because I was born in 2005 and I mean I don't know what happened because I wasn't there but just to hear the stories from the rangers and see the area where the plane would have landed and all of that, it was just an incredible experience because it's not firsthand, but you get to experience pretty much up close of what happened and you get to hear stories of how it impacted people and what, what it caused. I remember it was really cold outside. We went in November and even though it was like cold, I could still like keep my attention the entire time. The rangers were really good at like keeping us involved. And another big thing was you don't realize how many people were involved until especially that wall of names. You see how long that is and like how much far you have to go and where everybody was from. Like a flight over PA, you wouldn't think there were a lot of people there, but there was, wasn't there an immigrant from Japan too and like people like that just from all over that it impacted them. Whenever I was there, one of the most incredible things that stuck out to me was like the, the wall of the names. And just to go along that and think that every stone pillar with a name on it was actually a person on the plane. That that was the that that moment like set me over. It was just you realize that these were actual people and you know, this is something that you're witnessing. Right. And it's just an incredible experience. I'd love to go back anytime, like with my scout troop, we're planning trips to go out there and tour around the facilities as well. Social emotional learning curriculum is a big part of what we do here in our district, but uh, you know, being that they're so young and uh, obviously that was a different time frame for them, 
uh, you know, just those different skills like empathy. Uh, you know, we do several activities with the kids when they come back to school, uh, watching a video and discussing the events. Uh, and there's a lot of different skills that they can learn by uh, watching the videos, visiting the visitor center, uh, and talking with other, other individuals that have very vivid memories of those events. So it's certainly a valuable experience for our kids. And once again, I would recognize, recommend it for all of our students, both Bedford Area School District and beyond. It's also important because here in Bedford, Pennsylvania, we're only about a 25 minute drive from the impact zone of Flight 93. So not only is it a really important and relatively recent you know, episode in American history, it's a part of local history that I feel the students really should understand and should be able to experience uh, in the way that they can at Flight 93 Memorial. Definitely more than 500 students from Bedford who've been able to go to the exhibit. Usually in the days after the, um, after the visit, we talk with the students about how they, how they felt about it and um, even students who might rarely be serious in a normal situation talk about it in a quite serious way. Anyway, we can find additional funding for our students to do enrichment activities and additional activities to help benefit them uh, is something that we're going to pursue aggressively to try to support our students and their well-being. But I know students around me would very much need it, especially in Bedford, where we are not very well off as a whole. We have approximately, I would say, 45% of our students uh, that will qualify for free or reduced meals. So we do have uh, Title I funds and a variety of funding sources that are available to the students and staff in our district. I'd like to extend my, my deep and sincere thanks to Friends of Flight 93, which is an organization that I've been involved with in some capacity for a few years. Um, and, uh, and to thank them and to thank all their donors for making this possible for my students because it, um, it, the dollars that are given for that really help to, you know, help us to never forget. Well, the entire facility is just amazing uh, for anyone who has not been there. Uh, all the time and efforts and the money that has gone into preserving the memorial uh, is really something special. Uh, it's something I would certainly recommend anyone to go visit and be a part of, uh, even if you were uh, older like me and uh, remember the specific day, it's still a much different experience to go there and, and experience that stuff in person and see all the things that are in place there uh, in memorial of all those people.